It's the quarter system, right? It's like, uh, <laughs> I love the quarter system. Um, <laughs> so the, yeah, it's just, it's just constant pain until 11th week, and then, and then, and then it starts all over again. But, <laughs> but it's only 10 weeks. You only have to learn 10 weeks of stuff is what they say, right? Or in other words, we cram a semester's worth of things into 10 weeks, or, or I don't know. Okay, but anyway. Um, anyway, I hope you guys are hanging in there. If, you know, sometimes life just feels like it's too much, and, uh, and it's okay. That, that happens. You know, we have, um, we have services on campus, you know. We have CAPS, we have the counseling, <laughs> and stuff. You know, take care of yourself, okay? Um, your mental health is important. Your physical health is important. Make sure you're getting sleep. You know, eat well. Um, you know, get your proteins and your vegetables. <laughs> not, not just sugar uh, and caffeine. That's not a good diet. Um, so take care of yourselves. Yeah, we, there, there are services available if, uh, if, if life feels overwhelming at times. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, we, we support that. All right, let me, uh, let me guys, let me have you guys settle down and we will uh, begin with uh, today's stuff. So we are covering chapter six. Chapter six is about probability distributions. So with probability distributions, we're talking about, we can define these things as random variables. And a random variable is you do a random trial, and the outcome of the random trial is a number, okay? Or it's recorded as a number. Okay, so you perform a random trial. And the outcome is a number or is recorded as a number. Okay, so we can talk about, let me just give you some examples of random variables. I'm going to just abbreviate this RV. So we could say, I'm going to flip a coin. We flip a coin. And if it lands heads, so normally when you talk about a coin flip, we say it lands heads or it lands tails. But we can say if it lands heads, we write down one. And if, if it's tails, we write zero, okay? And so this is a random variable. Another example is we arrive at a random time at a bus stop. Okay, that's, so we're arriving at the bus stop at a random time that can be considered the random trial. What is it that we're going to record? We record the outcome. The outcome we record is how long we have to wait for the next bus to arrive. Okay. Another Another random variable could be something like, I'm going to pick a person at random. I pick a person at random, and we record the height of the person. <coughs> OK. 
OK, so these are all examples of random variables. We do something random. There's something <coughs> random to determine our outcome. And the outcome we measure is a number. Okay? And a probability distribution is a way for us to represent the outcomes of our random variables. The, and, and it's a way for us to say, these outcomes are more likely than these other outcomes. Okay? So a probability distribution is a way to show how likely or unlikely certain outcomes are. OK, so I'm, we'll take a look at each of these examples. And I'll kind of try to illustrate what the probability distribution for that random variable would look like. OK, can I flip to the uh, next slide here? Wait. OK, here we go. So let's talk about the coin flip. Coin flip, and we say heads will be recorded with a 0. And t I'm sorry, heads will be a 1, and tails will be <coughs> equal to 0. And so if this is a fair coin, what is the uh, probability of getting a 1? <coughs> probability of getting a 1 is 0.5. And what's the probability of getting 0? Also 0.5, yeah? And this is what we call, this is known as a discrete random variable. And with the discrete random variable, you know, only certain outcomes are allowed. <coughs> only certain outcomes are possible. Or another way, you know, the outcomes are, we might say they're countable. And our probability distribution would look something like this. We would say, We can get a 0, we can get a 1. I'll just put the number line and say, you know, we can go down to negative 1 and stuff. And here I have a height of 0.5, and so my probability distribution looks like this. I just say 0 has a probability of 0.5, 1 has a probability of 0.5. Okay. Now, sometimes in, uh, in books, to kind of because dots might be hard to see, you might see uh, vertical lines going up to the dots. That, that sometimes you might see this. Okay? But it's the same, same idea here. Okay? And you have, there's no possibility of getting a 2, so there's no, there's no probability associated with that. That's a 0 down there. So we can get 0.5. 0 happens with probability 0.5. 1 happens with probability 0.5. And this is, this is how we would display discrete random variables. With, when they're discrete, you know, only certain values are possible. And so we draw little uh, lines like that. OK, and then you know, if, if they're discrete, then all of the values, when we, when we sum the probabilities, they add to 1, right? OK, let's take a look at the other example. And we'll say we go to the, uh, the bus stop, right? Bus stop at a random time. <coughs> and let's say the, uh, the bus comes every 20 minutes, OK? This is like. OK, so if the bus comes every 20 minutes, and we're arriving at the bus stop 
my stuff at a random time, you know, what is the minimum amount of time we'd have to wait? So the minimum is going to be zero, right? We might get to the bus stop right as the bus is arriving. We don't have any wait time, OK? What's the max? The max would be 20. We could get to the bus stop just as the current bus is leaving, and so we have to wait 20 minutes for the next bus to come, right? And then what about the values in between? Are any of the values in between more likely or less likely? Now, all the values in between are all equally likely, yeah? And all values in between are equally likely. All right, so our probability distribution, this, this is a continuous This is a continuous random variable. And all of the values in between 0 and 20 are equally likely. And so we represent this. OK, I draw a number line. I put you know 0 right here. I put a 20 right there. And then I say, OK, everything between 0 and 20, they are all equally likely. So everything between 0 and 20 is equally likely. Everything below 0 has a probability of 0. Everything above 20 has a probability of 0. OK, we can't get anything. And then, you know, just kind of for completeness, we might have these vertical bars. Yes? So are you, are, is this data describing, are these data describing uh, someone who's going to a bus stop and between 0 and 20, those are the possibilities for the time it takes until the bus comes? Is this thing at any point between buses? Right, right. You're, you're arriving at the bus at a, a random time, OK? Yeah. And the bus comes every 20 minutes. And so you're arriving at a random time. So you might have to wait anywhere from 0 to 20 minutes. And all of those waiting times are equally likely. So, so that's, that's what we have. OK, so with a continuous random variable, we're, we don't have probabilities to sum because there, there's infinitely many values that are possible. You could wait uh, 10.1 minutes. You can wait 10.12 minutes. You can t wait 10.11257 minutes, OK, if, if you had super precise measuring clocks. Yes? Uh, so <coughs> question, but what if the line extends from like, before 0? Oh, it shouldn't. It's because I'm, my drawing is not perfect. Okay, It's supposed to go from 0 to 20. Oh, you mean like down here? Why is it going over here? No, no, okay. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's supposed to be from 0 to 20 exactly, okay? It just, and you know, it's hard drawing on this. Um, okay, so yeah, so everything between 0 and 20 is uh, e equally likely. And you know we don't have numbers to add, so we can't we can't sum up numbers because there's infinitely no many numbers. But what we can do is we can take the area, okay? So, and if you take calculus, you're probably used to this idea. And if you didn't take calculus, no worries. All we're going to do is we're just going to calculate the area here. And the area, the total area under any kind of curve, the total area will always equal one. So the the total area of this rectangle is equal to one. So if I draw a line at 10, and I say, oh, you know what? I want to shade everything to the left of 10. And I say, what is the probability that I have to wait less than 10 minutes at the bus stop? Okay, Probability that wait is less than 10 minutes, that would be equal to the area that's less than 10. OK, the area from 10 to 0. And what is that area equal to? If the total rectangle is 1, this is 0.5, right? And, and that's it, OK? This is how probability distributions work. You look at the total area, you say the total area is 1. And you know I've shaded in this much, OK? When I look at this picture, the amount of shaded is 
Therefore, the probability that I have to wait less than 10 minutes would be 0.5. Okay. Is that good? Okay, so I mean, this is, this is about as simple of a probability distribution as you can get, one where it's a nice rectangle. <coughs> Another example is the normal distribution, okay? The normal distribution Say it, it looks something like that, okay? It's not not the best normal distribution, but this is this is what the normal distribution might look like. And what we see is that values near the middle, okay? If this is the middle, values near the middle, these are most common because the, the hill is the tallest here. So you know our curve is tallest near the middle. So that means values near the middle are most common or appear most frequently. And then values out here and out here, the curve is short here. Or the curve is near 0. So these values appear infrequently. And so that's, this is our normal distribution. And so, you know, an example of data that follows the normal distribution, or at least resembles the normal distribution, is we can say, you know, in the United States, you know, the heights of adult women is approximately normal. So we could say <laughs> mu is equal, we'll say, I'm sorry, the mean <coughs> the mean, uh, which uses the symbol mu Mu looks like the letter U with a with a line in front. We can say is equal to 64, and we will say the standard deviation, which has the symbol sigma, looks like looks like this. We'll say the standard deviation is three. Now this is not exact, but just for simplicity, we will. We will say this. And the idea here is that if we look at adult women in the United States, you know, heights near 64, so that's 5 foot 4, these will be most common, okay? So heights near 64 inches will be most common. So Heights like, you know, 5 foot 3, 63 inches, 64, 65 inches. These are going to be kind of your most common heights. And then heights that are much higher or heights that are much lower will be less common. So if we go 6 inches above, 6 inches above 64, you know, 70 inches less common. You know, th there are still lots of many, lots many uh, women who are 70 inches tall or taller, but it's less common than 
values of 64 inches. Okay, 70 is less common. 60 inches, which would be something like, uh, I'm sorry, not 60, uh, 58 inches, so that's 4 foot 10, is also less common, okay? That's kind of the, uh, the gist here with the normal distribution. You got values near the middle are, are very common, values near, um, towards the, the fringes are less common. All right, if, if I say the mean is 64, and the standard deviation is 3, and I draw a line right in the middle at 64, and I ask what proportion of women are tall, uh, shorter than 64? What proportion of women are shorter than 64 inches? And you would tell me the answer to that is 50%, right? 0 0.5. Is that, is that okay? We just look at the picture and we say, okay, if 64 is in the middle, right? If the mean goes right in the middle here, how much is to the left? That's going to be 0.5. Okay, the total area is 1. How much is to the left of the halfway point there? 64.5. Uh, normally, the median is the halfway point, but when it's the normal distribution, the mean and the median are equal to each other. So, so that's what we have. Okay, is that okay with everybody? All right. What if I asked you something like, what proportion of women are shorter than 65 inches? Okay. Well, 65 inches, this, now we don't have a, a nice clear reference point, and this is a lot harder to do. So in order to answer questions like that, we first have to learn how to use the <laughs> standard normal distribution. That, this is where our table comes into play. So if you got here a little bit late and you didn't get a table, uh, come forward to this, the table up front and grab one of these tables here. Okay, so we need the standard normal distribution this might be also called the z distribution and the way the standard normal distribution works is that it it's a normal distribution And the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. Okay. okay. So let's say this is my normal distribution. I'll just copy this for a few curves. Okay. So what we can say is, I can say I will draw, I draw a vertical line, draw a line at z equals 0, okay? I draw a line at z equals 0, I shade everything to the left. Okay? Shade to the left. And then the question is, how much have I shaded? Yes, and the answer is 50% or 0.5. Okay, we don't, that's intuitive, I'm hoping. Okay, we, we look at this and go, oh, okay, the area over there is 0.5. Well, the table will confirm this, okay? So for the table, what we do is we say, okay, well, z is equal to 0, and I can just tack on some additional decimal places, and I can say z is equal to 0, 0.00. And when we look up things in the table, the, up to the tenths place, this is going to be my row. The row is the tenths place, and then the column corresponds to the hundredths place. And so what I do is I go to my table, 
And in the upper left hand corner, I see z is 0, 0.0, and the column is 0, 0.00, and then the value that appears there is 0. 0.5, okay, with a bunch of trailing zeros. So the idea here is you go to the row 0, 0, 0.0, and you go to the column 0, 0.00. ,00 and the value at that intersection is 0 0.5. And that's what we're saying. If I draw a line at z equals 0, 0.00, and I shade everything to the left, the amount I've shaded is 0 0.5. Is that good with everybody? OK. So important thing, the table always gives the area to the left. And it even says so on the table itself. It says, let me see if I have a, uh, let me pull up this table so if you look at the very top of the table it says cumulative probability for z is the area under the standard normal curve to the left of z so table always gives you the area to the left left of z so you say I'm gonna draw a line at z, and I'm, I'm going to shade to the left. How much have I shaded? OK, let's try another example here. So we will say, let's say I've got a normal curve here. And this time, I'm going to say z is equal to um, 0 0.94. OK, I'm going to come over here. All right, 0 0.94, and now I want to know how much is shaded to the left. Okay, So what I do is I go to the row. The row is 0 0.9, and then the column is going to be 0 0.04. So I go to 0 0.9, the column 0 0.04, and what do I find at that intersection right there? <coughs> 0 0.9, 0 0.04, I get 0 0.8264. Yeah? 0 0.8264. So I can write this and say the area to the left of 0 0.94 is 0 0.8264. Okay, or another way is I can say probability that z is less than 0 0.94 equals 0 0.8264. What if I said, okay, if that side is 0 0.8264 and I come over here, What's in uh, magenta? OK, so the uh, area to the right of 0 0.94 is what? OK, well, we know the total area is 1, so it's got to be 1 minus 0.8264, right? So I do 1 minus this, and I get what? 0.1736? 0.1736. I think I did that correctly. And, and that's our answer, OK? So the area to the right of z, 0 0.94, is 0.1736. So this is going to be 0.1736. I do 1 minus the area to the left. 1 minus area to the left is equal to the area to the right. Or I can say probability that z is greater than 0 0.94 is equal to 0.1736. The z table is symmetric. The z distribution is symmetric. So I'll, I'll put a little shortcut up here. You can use it if you're comfortable with it. But just like everything else in life, only use shortcuts if you're comfortable with it, okay? If you're not comfortable with it and you try the shortcut, it, it can lead to problems. So um, the area to the right of z 
is equal to the area to the left of <coughs> negative z. This is a shortcut. Don't use it if you don't like it. So instead of doing 1 minus 0.8264, you could have said, well, what's the area to the right of 0 0.94? I can find the area to the left of negative 0 0.94. And if you look up negative 0 0.94 in the table, indeed, you also find 0.1736. Okay? And that's because that, that's what we have there. All right? Don't worry about it. All right, let's, let's try an example. Just make sure we got the hang of this. We got we to gotta work quickly here. OK. So I'll draw a little, uh, we'll draw a curve here. Yeah, that's not what I want. OK, we'll make, a, we'll make a clicker question out of this. And Okay, so the question is, what is the shaded area? Okay, and your answer choice is, let me uh, start a session for you guys. Start new session. So I got Okay, go ahead and try this out. All right, looks like most of you guys got this. What is the shaded area, meaning the, the green shaded area? Get your clicks in. I'm going to close the uh, the poll here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, and that is that is correct. Okay, so yeah. So when we look at this, we go to the row negative 1.4, and then the column will be 0 0.00. So we go there, we go to negative 1.4 and the column point 0, 0, and I find 0 0.0808. But 0 so that's the area to the left. This side is 0 0.0808. 0 so this side is going to be area to the right, which is what we have shaded, is going to be 1 minus 0 0.0808. 0 and that's going to be equal to 0 0.9192, which is what we want. So if you pick 0 0.0808, you, that, the table always gives you the area to the left, and the picture has the area to the right. So that's, that's what's going on. OK. So we have the usage of the Z table, the standard normal Z. We can associate this back to any normal distribution. So earlier we said for uh, US adult women, we said the heights 
are normal, the mean is 64 and the standard deviation is 3. And so now I can ask something like, what proportion of women are shorter than uh, 66 inches? Okay. We can ask what proportion of women are shorter than 66 inches? So in order to answer something like this, what we want to do is we want to convert 66. Number one is convert our measurement to standard units or to z-scores. So convert our measurement to a z-score. So what is a z-score? z-score is the distance from the mean expressed in what? Standard yeah, it's the distance from the mean expressed in standard deviations. Mm -hmm. Good. Or we can say z is equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, or x minus mu <coughs> divided by sigma. So in this case, my z is going to be uh, 66. I want to know what proportion of women are shorter than 66 inches. So my x is 66. What is my mean? 64, and my standard deviation is 3. So I get z is equal to 2 thirds, or z is 0 0.66666 dot 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 dot. Okay? Um, when we look it up in the z table, so part 2 is look up your z in the table. Now, the table only gives us to two decimal places, so you know, round z to two decimals. So we will look up z equal to 0 0.67, OK? And so what proportion of women are shorter than 66 inches? Let me just draw a little picture here. I've got this. In the center, I'm going to put 64. That's our mean. And here, I'm drawing a line at 66. And I'm saying, what is this area right here? What proportion is shorter than 66? So we've converted 66 to a z-score. We get that z to be 0 0.67. So I look up 0 0.67, and the number I find is 0 0.7486. So this is 0.7486. And so my, uh, the answer is the proportion of heights, or the probability that a height is less than 66 is 0.7486, or about you know three quarters. That is our answer there. Did, did I lose anybody here? So it's just, there's just two steps. The first is whenever you have something like this, you just convert the number you're looking up into a z-score. And then once you have your z-score, you look it up in the table to get your answer. Okay. I'll just do one more quick example here. And, um, and, and we'll, we'll call it a day. All right, so we'll say I, I'm just making a, I don't know. What's the average weight of a cat? I don't know. Average weight of a cat. Oh, come on. Average weight of a cat. Oh, okay. 8.9 pounds. Okay, so we'll say the mean weight of a cat is 8.9 pounds. And we'll say the standard deviation, I'm making this up, we'll say is uh, 1.2 pounds, OK? Now, probably weight of cats is not 
exactly normal. It's probably right skewed because they're, you know, some cats, right? Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to say, um, what proportion of cats <coughs> weigh over, we'll say, 11 pounds? Okay, what proportion of cats weigh over 11 pounds? Okay, so let's, uh, let's draw a little picture here. This is my terrible normal curve. I'm going to put 8.9 in the middle. I'm going to draw 11 over here, and I'm shading what? Over, so I'm going to shade this side over here. Okay, so this first step, step one, z-score. We're going to get z is equal to 11 minus 8.9 divided by my standard deviation of 1.2. 11 minus 8.9 divided by 1.2. I get a z-score of 1.75. Okay. Part two, look up the z. We go to the table, we find z is equal to 1.75, and I get 0.9599, okay? So the area to the left is equal to 0.9599. I want the area to the right. Area to the right is going to be 1 minus that, and therefore the answer is going to be 0 0.0401. So about 4%. What proportion of cats weigh over 11 pounds? About 4% of cats weigh over 11 pounds. All right, we'll, uh, we'll end there. We'll see you guys on Friday. And, uh, and good luck. <laughs>